Right, now that we've considered charges, moving charges in static external uniform magnetic fields and that they undergo circular motion, we're now going to be looking at what happens when charges go through a static external field, but charges that move through a wire. So we're building up now the concepts of how forces affect the movement of a conductor, and that is a movement of charges in a wire. And then from there, once we understand how that works, we're going to be looking at how that conductor can then move um, in terms of when the two wires are next to each other. And then we're going to be delving into like motors later in this module, which is just the movement of conductors, sorry, the movement of charges in a wire in a motor. So we're sort of building up these concepts and seeing how they all work together. So in this section here, the motor effect, we're going to be looking at how charges um, experience a force when they move through a conductor. So let's check out the syllabus dot point here. So the inquiry section we're looking at is the motor effect. So the inquiry question is, under what circumstances is a force produced on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field? So under what circumstances? And this video here, we're going to be exploring what we know by this term called the motor effect. Okay, and it's going to link to this equation and the concepts that we have been looking at previously. So let's, let's get started. So here's a, a setup here that I've got in the lab there. And so what we're doing here is we're, to work out what the motor effect is, it's just a term that is used to describe um, the movement of a conductor when there is a current moving through that conductor and it's inside a magnetic field. So we call that the motor effect. So here we have a conductor, which is just a wire. We have that wire connected to a power pack and it's on a swing, all right? So it's free to move. So when we turn this on, it's plugged into DC here. So the DC current's gonna be coming down this direction. It's gonna be going across this way. And so we have a magnetic field and we're going to see how that works. So here I've got a, an animated picture of a similar scenario here. Here we have our conductor and the current is going that way. And we're going to be using our right hand palm rule to predict the direction of the force. So remember we have the thumb goes in the direction of the positive charges. And we're talking about conventional current here. So the positive charge goes that way. Remember we put our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. So since that's, and I want you guys to do this at the same time, you get your hand out. In reference to my picture that I'm looking down here, I'm putting my fingers in the direction of the field. I've got my thumb now going in the direction of the current. So my palm is facing downwards, which is telling me that the force is going to be going downwards, okay, with this diagram, how I've drawn it. So this is our relationship here. And remember, these are all 90 degrees to each other. Very important. And we're going to reinforce that point. So let's watch a little video here of what's going on. Remember, the North Pole's at the top. The south pole is down the bottom, and the current is going that way. So let's watch the video and see if that happens. Okay, see so here we go, we connect it. And yes, well done, it's going forward. What happens if we switch the field around? So let's switch the field around. And if we switch the field around, that means your fingers now going in the opposite direction. So that means they sh it should be going backwards. And of course, it goes backwards. So we can use this right hand palm rule to predict the direction in which a conductor will experience a force when there's moving charges going through it. Okay, and that is called the motor effect. The motor effect is the movement of a conductor as a result, or the force that that conductor experiences as a result of moving charges inside a magnetic field. So let's look at this one here. Now there's lots of ways, this comes from a station that, that I normally do in the lab, but they, they can ask questions like this in multiple choice questions. They may tell you that the current is going in that direction there, but they don't tell you the polarity of the magnets. So let's watch the video, see which way that the, um, the uh, swing moves. Does it move forward, does it move backwards? And then use that knowledge to find out the polarity of the magnet. So let's watch and see what we get. All right, how did you go? Did you get this? Right, the current was going that way. It moved backwards. So you get your right hand palm rule. You put it 
in the direction of the force, right? So you put the you put your palm in the direction of the force, which is back towards the, the horseshoe magnet. The thumb is in the direction of the current, which means your fingers are moving in the direction of the field. So that means the top of this horseshoe magnet is the north pole. So let's write, let's draw that in. So we've got the north pole there, and that means, of course, the one down the bottom is the south pole. Okay, and so what we're doing here is we realize that the field is going down like this. Okay, and then the movement of the of the uh, the force that it experiences is back toward the, the swing experience is back. All right, so here's a here's a typical question here that uh, has been asked in the past with HSC. Um, this is the motor effect. This is very basic, but they can test it in a variety of ways. Generally, in um, one mark multiple choice questions. So let's read this one and see what it says. The diagram below sh shows equipment attached to a battery. Okay, um, we can see we've got some conducting liquid. Now, in the olden days, right, if you look at some old prac books, I was looking at one before from 1986, practicals that you do in class. In the olden days, this conducting liquid would be mercury, right? So you'd have mercury here, you'd have a metallic dish. So that means that the current, which is going this way, goes around through the wire, through the mercury, hits the metallic disc, and you get a complete circuit. So that means that the current is going in this direction here. So let's just draw down the current like this. The pole of the magnet, remember the fields come out of the north and go around towards the south, so it's going around that way, which means at this location, just there, if I was to enlarge that, what's happening? Well, here's the conductor with the current. We have the field going this way, Okay, get your right hand palm rule, put your fingers in the direction of the of the field and the current, and your thumb goes down the page, right? Which means the force is coming out, and in, rele in relevance to the diagram here, that means the wire is being pushed in a clockwise direction. Okay, so if I was to change my color here and go green, the wire would be going, the wire would be going back and around. So it's going in a clockwise direction, which is A. Okay. Away from the magnet, not true. That's saying it's going out that direction. It's not doing that. The force is going backwards into the page, which would make the wire go in a clockwise direction. So that's just one example of a multiple choice question they might give you using your knowledge of the motor effect, your right hand palm rule, predicting the movement of the wire, which is very important because this fundamental basis of the motor effect is what's going to cause us to understand why does a current, sorry, why does a conductor move inside a motor? And uh, that's a very important concept. So that's it for this video. Make sure you take plenty of notes. Check out the questions at the end of this video. Well, what I should mean is the video underneath this one, because we're going to be putting questions that test your lines within the video. They will happen with most sections, not all, but they. Um, I'm trying to incorporate them on the same page as the video now, as opposed to in previous modules and courses where we did study bites. I still include some study bites for activity cards, but make sure you check out the questions underneath this video. Anyway, see you in the next video where we take this concept even further. All right, before we go to the next video, I want you to check out more courses that we have here on our YouTube channel, which are just small snippets from the actual bigger courses that we have on thefliptteacher.com. Of course, with all of our courses, we try to incorporate practical sessions, we have study cards, we have posters that you can print off and stick around your room and do a lot more. We have up to 68 or more videos per course. That's like nine to 10 hours of material that really delve deep into the syllabus and looking at essential content, skills, mathematical manipulations, and a lot more. So if you like that, go over to flipteacher.com and check it all out, and I'll see you in the videos.